So if you like fishing, this is the episode that you definitely need to watch. We stayed around Gladstone, so we did fishing all in these areas on land and in the boat. We had a couple of hiccups along the way, but we were really happy with our catches. We do think we caught probably well over 50 fish, did lots of camp cooking, even did some homemade potato scallops. And as always, the dogs joined us for the trip as well. So keep watching from Gladstone to 1770. So we've just been fishing for what, like two hours? Yep. Caught probably near 30 fish. Kind of forgot that the dogs were in the back. So we're gonna let them out and go to the toilet and give them a bit of a run on this nice grassy area. Hey Bill. You had a great morning's fish. It's just dead on low tide now, so the fish has stopped biting. So we're gonna give up, go inside, go to the shops and stuff, and then get ready for an afternoon fish. So we're just about to fish underneath that bridge. We're just getting everything set up and ready to go. Um, this was just another recommendation by Justin from the local fishing tackle place, which has been super helpful. So fingers crossed, we got about 25 or 30 this morning. So hopefully on that recommendation, there'll be just as many tonight. No luck so far because the current is so strong it's just pulling our line straight into the oysters and then cutting them straight off. So we're going to add some sinkers on and then hopefully that'll be the trick to get some fish. Catch nothing else, we got one. So Dan just threw his one straight back in, which retardedly I thought I was filming, but I wasn't. And that was a little brim. And then I've just got this little brim here. So, so far we've got a finger mark and two brims. So not too bad. At least we've got something in the spot. Better than nothing. So we are just packing up. We ended up getting, what was it, three fish? Three fish, two brim and a finger mark. So yeah, better than nothing, but definitely not as good as what we were hoping, but. Not as good as the whole water outlet. Yeah, that's for sure. Gentle. That wasn't very gentle, Levi. Gentle. No, Levi! Oh, Bill, I'm gonna have to break this one in half to give it to you now. You greedy older sister. Zill sit. Good. Gentle. Good. Gentle. Good girl. A big fatty here. So we've just checked out of the caravan park. 
we're going to the hot water outlet for one last fish. We've only got about an hour and then we're going to be heading off to our next destination. Ends on. Good. On a good fish here. Keep his head up out of those rocks. What do you reckon? Big brim? Yeah, No, nah, I don't think it's a brim. Well, it's a big brim. It is. Trevally. Yeah, Woohoo! <laughs> hey, he's bigger than my yesterday one. He's a nice one too. Really cool. Don't you think? Oh, they are, yeah. I think they're one of the prettiest fish. Yeah. The circle looks done its job, right at the corner of the mouth. What a brim. Ah. Didn't even get to bloody throwing back in. In your box, pups. So here we are at Boyndale Bush Camp. Not a bad little spot for a free camp. We've got a concrete slab. Got the fire going with the grill. Gonna do some ribs very soon. We took a bit of a punt here, hoping we'll be able to launch Tinny into Lake Awunga, which is pretty much directly behind us. The only problem with that is, you know we do it probably above 90%. I think the dam's currently at 60%. So we got here, I'll get some drone footage that I'll put up now you can see you can't actually get a boat in. So we drove about 50 k's out here and we can't actually get the boat in. So we have to drive all the way back to the actual boat ramp at Lake Lunga to launch a tinny, but that's all right, a bit of a punt and we lost, but it's still a nice spot. It's free, lots of grass, good area for the dogs. And um, yeah, it's free. We've got a little resident frog in there making some noise <laughs> in, the, in the drain pipe. It's gonna keep us up all night, I think. <laughs> anyway. We'll check in with them. She's doing a MZ tonight. Pork ribs over the fire. <laughs> Be with a frog. <laughs> Anybody else's dog choose the ball over food? Tilla doesn't give a crap about food at all. But if Dan kicks the ball over, she'll lose herself underneath the area chair. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not eat the chip, Bill? Eat the chip. Eat, Zil. Zil, Zil, eat. <laughs> so odd. You'd kill for that chip, wouldn't you, Sash? So tonight's dinner, we're going to be doing some ribs over the fire. We always do ribs in our smoker at home, but we've never actually done it over an actual little grill over the fire. So we're hoping it does turn out. I have no idea about timing. We also don't have any internet here, so I can't actually Google and cheat the recipe. So we're thinking we're going to do wrapped in the owl foil for about 30 minutes. And I'm going to do the like the fattier, meatier side down so it really like actually soaks in all the juices and stuff. 
and then we're going to unwrap them and then do 15 minutes on the underneath part and then finish it with 15 minutes on the top so it gets that nice crispiness to the top so all we've done is put i've sprayed them with a little bit of oil i then covered them in some mustard we also did garlic salt pepper and white pepper and then on mine it just doesn't have the garlic because i can't have the garlic and then what we're having with these i've also never done so i don't know whether these will turn out but i was craving potato scallops or potato cakes so hopefully they turn out we're going to deep fry them in a nice batter so hopefully they'll be like just like you get from a takeaway store For the potato scallops, all I've done so far is I've already cut up some potatoes really quite chunky and then already boiled them. And then I just let them sit and I boiled them in with, with some salt water as well. And then I just let them sit in some cold water just to cool down for probably about an hour. And then all you're going to do is just get plain flour. And then I'm literally just going to dunk these in. Hopefully you can hear me over our frog. <laughs> So really coat each one of them. Okay, now because the, the fire is quite hot, you're only going to need, instead of the 15 minutes that we thought, it's only really been about five minutes or so. And we're just going to flip so that the final side gets nice and char grilled. And then we're going to wrap them and let them rest. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. Alright, so with the potato scallops, we've just got our charcoals from the fire. Levi, get away from the fire. Levi. Good. Then we just got our little metal tins. Oh, it's really hot already. On the fire, and we just got some oil just to get really nice and bubbling hot, and that's what we're going to deep fry the scallops in. So I'm just going to dunk the scallops into a bit of a batter. Um, now, I've, I'm using self-raising instead this time of plain flour, because I'm kind of hoping it kind of fluffs up a little bit. And we're using a little bit of beer. I have no idea how much, just mix enough until it's like a bit of a, yeah, a thick batter. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, it's a bit of a sloppy mess, but hopefully it should work anyway. Dunk them in. And just let them sit until you're ready to dunk them straight in the oil. So just going to take them off and then wrap them just to rest. That's how nice they look. Wrap them up in some foil and let them sit while we cook the potatoes. Now because these are already cooked, it shouldn't take too long. It's just cooking the outside. So just make sure and test that your oil is nice and hot. And then get them in. And don't take them out until they're nice and crispy. I might give them a flip. I'll just see what it looks like once it starts cooking. There you go, the bush deep fryer. Right there. So they're looking pretty brown and we're pretty hungry, so we're not waiting any longer. So just pop them straight out onto some paper towel. And then as soon as I go, we're back over to the table. I'm then going to put some salt straight on it so it sticks on really nice. And then we are good to eat. All right, guys, we are the most keen to try this meal. Look at how good looking the scallops look. And hopefully the ribs are really nice. We've let them rest for a while. Nice and tasty. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Mm, so good. 
Will there be enough crunch on the potatoes? That sounded crunchy. Mm. That's really hot. Mm. Oh man, it's so good. Mm. I think best one to date. I think so. Oh, feral pig running, guys. Bad camera work, so I need my better camera, but I don't have it on me. So you would have already heard from Dan in a previous video that we were unable to get our boat from where we are staying here at Boyndale into the water because it's just too low. Now we hadn't really done much research before getting here and also while staying at Boyndale because we didn't have any reception. So then our next idea was heading towards the Lake Awunga Caravan Park because we knew that would have a boat ramp to get our boat in. We really wanted to fish all these areas along here as we heard it could be really good fishing. But unfortunately, when we ended up getting to Lake Awunga and realized upon the big signs at the front, you actually can't have cats and dogs because it is a wildlife sanctuary. So unfortunately, we're going to have to give this one a miss and maybe come back another time. All right, we're here at the boat ramp. We've just set up the crab trap, so hopefully we can put that out now. And then on the way back, we might have something in it, fingers crossed. And we're just getting the boat set up. First cast, bitten off, not too bad, at least we know there's fish in. So unusual, like what are you even doing it for? They don't even look like they're eating anything or... Even if it's small, it's still a fish. Kill. First one. <laughs> yeah. We didn't get a pick with him because he literally just released himself. Just as 
because we're about to go too. Holy shit, it nearly bloody broke the GoPro off. Go hard. Oh, it's a good size too. Go, girl. Get him in. Easy, easy, easy. How good's that? Oh, it's weighty. Still. We'll take it. How good's that? <laughs> God, you yeah, did well. You did well. You did well. Bloody hell. Alright, see you later. Catfish. No, I leave it. It's not to eat. No. Well done. <laughs> Right, so we just pulled up to this spot. There's a little bit of a rock bar here behind me. And the tide is hammering out through here. And we just anchored up in a tiny little eddy. Em just lost what we thought was a little barra. And we just anchored up. We got two rods in with a little bit of squid. And we're just casting some Zeric paddle tail soft plastics. All the way to the back of the skull. There's been a few fish jumping around the shallows here, so hopefully we can snag one. crazies at the front that are obsessed with chasing the lure even when the lure is just dangling they're both crazy and then we've got the lazy lab in the middle that only goes crazy when there's actually a fish hey sash Again, oh, that's a good better size than mine though, it's good. Oh man, I got a bite already. Ah. Oh. Swing him over to me, swing him over to me. It's right, it's heavy line, it won't break. It's a good little broom. It's all right. Back to the depths. Oh, maybe it's a bit of the rock though. Because it was definitely didn't feel like, it felt like a fish at the beginning. Oh, actually I think it is. Hmm. He's not bad, he's still legal.
this one, yeah. Oh shit, I'm literally going and it's right underneath the boat. Up, get his head up. Could this be the jack? Is he better? Mm, a little bit, but I think it's just harder because it was near a rock. I think it's just another cod, maybe, or I don't know. Another catfish? Is it? Can't see. No, it's another cod. Oh, it's a bit better, a bit bigger. This is ugly, that's all. Oh, I think they're pretty in their own way. <laughs> uh, maybe not. <laughs> Dan just got a good brim. On the drift. The fishing has been so good here, we are contemplating coming back for the afternoon bite. Just stopping in at Tenham Sands to have a bit of a look. It's on low tide. It's really pretty. We're back again for an afternoon session because the morning was so good. Gonna check the crab pot. And we're just here waiting to put the dogs on the boat. Another one bites the dust on the infamous Twee Sticks. Yeah, 
going here. Holy shit, what the f I just ate. <laughs> oh, I can't believe he come back. Yeah, like literally, it was like nothing at one point and it was gone. Yeah. Actually, felt like he'd bit the hook off. And then when I wound in, it felt like he just went, you know what? I'm gonna go. You mean like a bad at it. No, Sash. Sash, no. Dogs are like, why? Why would you do that? See him, he's just over there. Is he? All right, so it's taking till seven o'clock until the 14 year old cattle is finally ready to actually relax a little. Sasha was ready to relax as soon as she woke up and Zill's still crazy. Remember, Dan had just asked me if we were going to head back in. So far, the fishing had been pretty slow for the Arvo and only produced really tiny cotton brim, so we didn't even include that in the footage. We had just caught that awesome grunter, so it got us really excited. So we did what anyone that loves fishing would actually do, and we kept fishing for hours and hours in complete darkness to not even catch one more fish. I don't know if this is going to pick it up, but there's a little bug there on that edge and it literally has a light underneath it and flashes. How the hell it's like reflective, I don't know. So cool. That's what he looks like. The uh, troubles of reversing at night time. Just reversed into a rock. Gonna have to get a new toolbox. Are you hungry, puppy? Are you hungry? Hey? Always hungry, aren't you, Sash? Best thing you could see in the morning. A nice hot coffee for Dan and a hot chocolate for me. And I was so pumped when I saw it said cinnamon donuts. 
until you zoom in you probably can't see on that sign but that big red one says not till 8 a.m and it's way early than 8 a.m so sad would have been a great start to the morning right, so assessing the damage in the daytime thankfully we, thankfully we have the toolboxes on the back of the caravan because it saved damage in the caravan so thankfully it was them that actually got whacked just have to stop at a bunnings and get a replacement unfortunately but what do you do teaches us to not be lazy and to have someone go out behind the other caravan. All right, next morning we've just gotten a hot coffee and a hot chocolate from the little co um, coffee van that was here. <clears throat> we were so happy with our fishing from yesterday, even though we didn't catch as much in the afternoon, but still catching a big grunter and Dan got a couple of good brim and stuff. We're going to go back because right at the very end when we're checking the crab trap, we saw on the sounder, 100% it was a barramundi. So it was so dark and you know it's bad with midges when I'm offering to stay to still try and catch this barra and Dan said, no, let's go back because he was getting eaten alive. So it shows how bad because he normally does not get eaten at all. So we're going back for round three to try and get this barra. At least we actually saw one on the sounder. And then after that, we're gonna go to 1770. I'm pretty sure to have an explorer around. So. We've just assessed the damage of what we reversed into last night, which was a big rock. So it teaches us, Dan was trying to be good to me and I offered to go out behind to actually um, direct him to make sure nothing was behind. But because the mosquitoes were like insane at this boat ramp, he was trying to be good and not get me eaten. And um, yeah, so we hit the rock, but it doesn't look too bad from looking at it in the morning. So yeah, we'll just have to go to Bunnings and buy a new toolbox. And fingers crossed. We will get that barra that we saw in the sounder last night. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Third attempt for this crab trap. Third time the sash? Time, they say. Is that ball? Nothing. Nothing to move the face body. Oh, well, at least the other guys at the boat ramp hadn't gotten crabs in ages either. It's not even gone. Oh, we'll get it on the way back. Try somewhere else. So we're fishing the run out tide here. Just underneath this there's a big rock bar, which we got told by the bloke at the tackle store is a good spot for mangrove jack. There's a bit of a scum line coming out here from one of the creeks. As you can see, we've seen a few fish jump, so hopefully we'll get a we'll get a few in a sec. There we go. We've got a little weedless Zeric paddle tail on one rod and the infamous gold bomber on the other one. And we got just some squid for bait as well. At the same time, I'll throw in lures. Oh, that's a good one. I think it's a lot, but I don't know. I thought it was Sash's tail hit me. I was going to go quickly. 
If I only come on the bite, here's the one. Go, Gilly. What is I it? think he's another grunter. Yeah. Was it a mangrove jack? No, it's silvery. Oh, it's a grunter, I think, yeah. Try and get him on this left side if you can. It's not too hard. Well, it's the same one from yesterday. Swimming back. I don't think you've seen the boat yet. He's like, oh shit, the boat! <laughs> no, Levi. Levi, get away. Yes, what a fish. I think it's bigger than you on yesterday. Probably. That's a ripper. Oh, that's good. On your gill. So you six hours a day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. You were kicking like crazy, honey. working some bait just out there. Unless we head over to the rock bar in what five minutes. Yeah. Looks like it's that eddy started, like the current slowed down there now. Mm. I mean we'll get there earlier than yesterday and that way we'll have a lot more time to fish it because we know there's a good fish there. Yeah. That looks like a nice offering. What do you got there? A bit of squid and a bit of twiggy. Two piece feed. Sounds like an old man whistling that bird. She's not thirsty because she's slept and done absolutely nothing. No luck on the Zeric. So I'm just tied on a little flip prawn. Give that one a go. Are you serious? That was just, that was just dangling. I was just wasn't sitting it? in the water. Wow, they are a good little. <laughs> How's that? Alright, yeah, close on Alright, so little flick prawn was just dangling in the water. And I was re tying a lure on for him. And the rod bent over and old mate just whacked it. It was just sitting there. I 
swim with it. M got a cod. See you later, mate. Two lines in with some bait with some squid, and then we got some lures out. All right, the gold bomber, we ended up finding. I lost it all the way back up there in those shallows, and we thought we saw it, we chased after it and disappeared. And we just found it when we are coming back. <laughs> and Dan's gonna go around all over again. Great drive in there. Ha <laughs> ha! Gotcha! Alright guys, we weakened. And we're actually on our way to 1770 now. And we went past the coffee truck with the donuts. We got some donuts mm -hmm. and a nice frappe. On a hot day, after a hot mm. day's fishing, goes down the tree. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty good, hey? <laughs> episode we travel around the beautiful 1770. The tinny comes off and we go for a fish. We cook up some flathead bites and also make a Nutella cinnamon and peach toasty dessert. Then we're off to Lake Mondrian to hopefully catch a barra.